Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. I know that I only uploaded a few days ago but I have something really exciting to talk about and I don't think I could have waited for another week to upload this. Um, but very recently, well day before yesterday, I went to um, Rupi Kaur's world tour. So she has been travelling the world um, because she released her new book a couple of months ago um, called The Sun and Her Flowers. This is a book of poems. Um, she's just amazing. Those of you that follow me on Instagram probably know that I absolutely adore everything that she does and all of her work and how like sharp and poignant all of her work is. So after her show, I was totally inspired um, and I just wanted to have a little conversation with you about how I felt after it. And I think that it's really important for me to talk about this, especially as a man, um, because I think that there are a lot of messages within the sun, her flowers and milk and honey um, that are just so important to society today and especially being a brown Indian man I think that it's especially important because there are a lot of cultural factors that come into it so I actually vlogged the process and I want to continue on with with the vlog so I'm gonna now cut to the vlog footage so the way this is gonna work is there's gonna be a bit of vlog a bit of me a bit of vlog and then a bit of me so it's gonna be some of the poems and then her talking about the poems and then me talking about the poems um, and I'm just really excited and I don't know how this is going to all work out and if it'll work out well or if it'll just break the flow but I don't know, I'm very excited to talk to you about it so let's go on with it Hey everyone, so I'm about to leave the house because we're going to well I'm going to see Rupi Kaur if those of you that don't know who Rupi Kaur is she is a writer, more specifically a poet she wrote Milk and Honey, that book that you saw everywhere on Tumblr and everywhere on Instagram. And then she most recently wrote uh, The Sun and Her Flowers, which is one of my favourite anthologies. It's so good. Um, but yeah, so she has a show in London. She's Canadian, but she has a world tour. So I happened to get tickets for her show in London. A few of my friends from uni are also going, so I'm going to see them there, um, which is really exciting. And also I'm catching up with one of um, my like family friends just before for coffee. She's also going to the show. So yeah, uh, it's about te five past, ten past four. I'm gonna leave the house now. Um, it might rain, so I'm gonna carry an umbrella. Got my headphones to the tube, and then I need to get my phone. Phone, wallet, keys. I think we can go. Bye. Driving solo, I'm just swerving through my hands. When I'm sober, I just don't like who I am. Pull me up a four and I feel like myself again. Roll me up some dope and I feel like myself again. I'ma break every box they try to put me in. I got a lot of enemies who used to be my friends. Pull me up a four and I feel like myself again. Roll me up some dope and I feel like myself again. about to sit down I just turned around just having a little look around and suddenly for those of you that know me know that I absolutely love this person so much um, I happen to bump into Amelia, Amelia Liana um, for those of you that don't know her she is a public figure on Instagram on YouTube she's on Twitter her YouTube is brilliant for those of you that know me you know that she's my absolute favorite YouTuber she is my absolute favorite account on Instagram um, me and my sisters absolutely love her. We think she's amazing. I, I absolutely just love the way that she puts her content together and it just it's very authentic whether it's a new coffee shop in London or whether it's um, a new travel destination. I love to look at her Instagram page and her YouTube channel for inspiration um, and I think that she's just a general like positive person. If there's something on your feed or something on YouTube that you don't like or that doesn't keep you happy or doesn't keep you positive or makes you feel worse about yourself, unsubscribe, unfollow. But she's definitely the complete opposite of that. Once I watch her vlogs, I feel so much better. Um, she's very inspirational. If you look at her Instagram, which I'm gonna pop here, it's just one of the most aesthetically pleasing Instagram pages ever. I was definitely one of those people that would like comment on her live streams or send her DMs and occasionally get random replies and they would just like make my day. Screw that, make my week. Um, and I could not believe that I like saw her in the other, and I, was, I sort of like ran towards her. I got to meet her and I'm so happy to say that she is just as lovely as she is on camera and on YouTube as she is in person. 
um, Amelia, if you're watching, it was so lovely meeting you. Um, you're such a lovely person. Um, and thank you for vlogging with me. I'm going to now go back to the vlogging footage that I have with her. Guess who I bumped into? Hello. I literally was running so late, I came straight from the gym. Like, I literally was so mad. I literally cannot believe this is happening. I was like, oh, that looks like Emiliana. Oh my god, it's Emiliana. Will you tweet me a link to your channel? I will definitely do it. Well, it's so lovely meeting I'm so you. I'm excited. You I am over the moon. I, I, in such a rush, I forgot my copy at home. So I'm, I literally was popping out to get another copy. I was like, I need to annotate this. I need to see what she says. But I'm so excited. We've been counting down for a while. <laughs> Do you want to say hi to my sister? Yeah! Harfrey and Shireen. Look, look, tell me that again. Harfrey and Shireen. Harfrey and Shireen. Hello. In such a flurry, I told her that my sister's names were Harfrey and Shireen. Now, the mistake I made there was that Harfrey and Shireen are both the names of one sister. Harpreet is her name and Shireen is her nickname. And the other sister absolutely hates me because her name is Gershagan or Shagan. So either I was supposed to say Harpreet and Gershagan or Shireen and Shagan. And I messed up. So um, I'm sorry, sister. And Amelia, if you're watching, if you want a shout out to the sister that you missed, you can go ahead and give a shout out to Shagan. Delhi, right, you said? So one's in, one, uh, one's in Toronto and one's in Delhi right now. We're all from here and we all love your channel and watch it avidly. And we've now got a mum book to tell. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much. Aww. I also want to give a quick shout out to one of my viewers, Vishav Jyote, sorry if I've got that wrong, who was at the event and knows how much I love Amelia and saw me meeting her and took this sneaky little video. Thank you! I know that when I started vlogging, your vlogs were definitely something that I looked up to as inspiration um, for my vlogs and I think that really ties into the general theme of the day as well with Ruby Core and um, finding inspirational women in your life and staying positive so thank you amelia thank you for being such an amazing person um if those of you that haven't checked out her channel instagram i'm going to put them up here i'm going to put them in the description box below and do check her out so going back to ruby core the show started and ruby core was absolutely amazing from the get-go something about her was almost like captivating and magical she, like for the moment the show started to the moment it ended we were almost in a trance <laughs> Everybody, I was like two minutes ago upstairs. I'm like, I'm gonna vomit. Everybody, move. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Because you're also beautiful and good looking. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, just wait. Uh, thank you so much for coming. It's such a blessing to be in your presence. And thank you for selling this out in like one minute. Um, <laughs> it's, that's the biggest compliment you could give a performer. Um, but let's jump right into it. It was like a flurry of different emotions. She almost felt like a friend, and that's what I loved about it. Rupi Kaur was just... Something about her was just so free and open, and I felt like there was absolutely no barrier up, which was just amazing. The way that she was reciting her poems was just... It added so much to just reading it. And I can, now that I'm rereading some of the poems, I can kind of picture the way that she was um, reciting them. And I, to give you an example, I'm just going to play one of, a little clip from one of her poems. <laughs> On the last day of love, my heart cracked inside my body. I spent the entire night casting spells to bring you back. I reached for the last bouquet of flowers you gave me, now wilting in their vase. One by one, I popped their heads off, and I ate them. I stuffed a towel at the foot of every door. Leave, I told the air, I have no use for you. I drew every curtain in the house. Go, I told the light, no one is coming in and no one is going out. So what is it with you and sunflowers, he asked. I point to the field of yellow outside. Sunflowers worship the sun, I tell him. Only when it arrives do they rise. When the sun leaves, they bow their heads in mourning. That is what the sun does to those flowers. It's what you do to me. I came back from this evening having learned a lot from Rupi Kaur. I think I could summarize them into four lessons that I... I definitely came back from that and learned, which was definitely one that I picked up from the book as well, um, is respecting your parents. I think that Ruby Core very, very, very clearly and boldly goes across certain issues. 
um, I could totally relate when she was talking about her parents when she was younger, how they take her to supermarkets and take her to like the aisle where there were Indian spices and food and how embarrassed that she would be that they were sort of in an Indian store. I, I, I can totally relate. Like whenever my parents wanted to go to Southall to pick up something or to go to quality food and buy some food, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to stay at home. You know, what? I don't want to go just because of that weird embarrassment of being different. But he, and now that I'm 20 and at university, I'm sort of completely flipped on that and I'm trying to like latch on to every single part of my culture that I possibly can because it's a completely different image I want to make sure I want to hold on to my identity and make sure that I'm like Ruby Cole says pin it up next to Van Gogh and Dali and make sure that that's that's your culture and even if you don't think that that is something that you can relate to don't strip it away from your parents don't take it away from them if they want to listen to indian music if they want to go and shop in the indian food aisle or in their own culture that's that they've left everything in the world to come and give you a life here and they've left everything in their home countries to try and make a life for you so don't strip away the one thing that they have from home and that's really something that hit home for me because i remember being that kid who was just like why do you have to be like this why are you doing this and let's go back to that grocery store where my mom was like screaming out in Punjabi and she's like get your ass over here I won't say that in Punjabi though and she's like you know we gotta go and I was like oh mom I'm so embarrassed and she would show up at the cash register with like her Ziploc bag with all her change in it because she used her money to buy me a backpack but I was like oh you're so embarrassing mom um, and I struggled with that for a long time and I feel like so many immigrants do and then I hit like maybe 18 really when I left home for the first time and I was like whoa like you left everything that was familiar to you whether it was food weather land climate language literally everything and you showed up at this place with nothing and you built an entire life and raised four kids like that I mean, I can write books, but I'm sorry, it compares to nothing that she's done because that to me is like art. And now looking back, I'm like, I was such an idiot and I just want to say sorry to every single person that I stifled their culture from or told them or every single, whenever, every time that I told my parents that, look, don't do this, don't do this, why are we standing out? Because you know what? Standing out is right. And I think that I would, never would have I had... Never would I have had the courage to stand up and be myself in a sea of people that are trying to blend in. And I think that is something to really, really be proud of. And you should really be proud of your culture. And I think that that is definitely one thing that I took away. The second lesson, and I think the one thing that Rupi Kaur has really done using her poems, is make is making being emotional totally okay. It's so okay to talk about your emotions. I feel, I feel especially as a man, it's very easy to sort of hide away what you're feeling, hide away your emotions. And alongside being emotional, I feel like she's making being sexual okay. One of the things that she mentioned was that being sexual isn't a dirty thing and we need to stop labeling it. There's a list of questions I wanna ask. So if you're listening somewhere, here I am asking them, what do you think happens the love that's left behind when two lovers leave. How blue do you think it gets before it passes away? And does it pass away or does it still exist somewhere waiting for us to come back? Do you still imagine the curve of my spine and how you want it to rip it out of me? Because the way it dipped into my perfectly rounded bottom drove you crazy. And is it wrong? thing that I learned about from Rupi Kaur is loving yourself first. Well, I tell her, I don't think love is him anymore. If love was him, he would be here, wouldn't he? If he was the one for me, wouldn't he be the one sitting across from me? I don't think love is him anymore. I repeat, he took and he took, wrapped me in the word special until I was convinced he had eyes only to see me, hands only to feel me, a body only to be with me. Oh, how he emptied me. Well, how does that make you feel in terms of Well, I said, it kind of 
kind of makes me feel like shit. <clears throat> Maybe we're all looking at it wrong. Maybe we think that it's something to search for out there, something that's supposed to crash into us on our way out an elevator or slip into our chair at a cafe somewhere. Appear at the end of an aisle at the bookstore looking the right amount of sexy and intellectual. <laughs> but I think love starts here. Everything else is just desire and projection of all our wants, needs, and fantasies. But those externalities could never work out if we didn't turn inward and figure out how to love ourselves in order to love other people. <laughs> love does not look like a person. Love is our actions. Love is giving all we can, even if it's just a bigger slice of cake. It's understanding the kind sweetness we deserve. So when someone shows up saying that they're going to provide it as you do, but their actions seem to break you rather than build you, love is knowing who to choose. One of the things that she made so clear is that love starts with yourself. Love starts with looking after yourself, making sure that you're, whether it's, like she said, a bigger slice of cake or whether it's spending more time looking after yourself. That's something I think that I've really learned, not just from that, but in the last year, that self-care, looking after yourself, loving yourself comes way before anything or anyone else. And I think I'm very happy that that was one of her key messages. And the last lesson that I learned from Rupi Kaur's talk was we're, we're still not in a world where, although feminism is a idea and a culture that is on the rise and that more and more people are understanding of the inequalities that there are amongst men and women. I think that it's still a war that we're all fighting. I think that where one of the things that she apologizes about, and I think that that it immediately sort of occurred to me that, oh my God, this is so true, is that I can't find the poem right now, but she says, I apologize to every girl that I've called beautiful or gorgeous or pretty before I've called smart, intellectual, strong, which is so true. And I feel like, that's the, the reason that I think that this book is so universal and that anyone can just pick it up and be able to relate to it is that it really does touch upon the issue of women just not being give, given the same equal treatment in society. And as much as laws and I think laws and legislations are a great place to start, but I think that beyond any laws, beyond any legislations, it's this societal way of thinking that we need to change that when you see a woman, like the first things that come to you, it's like, oh gosh, you're very pretty, which I know you have the right intentions, but is that what we're doing? Are we reducing women to a physical attribute, whereas men were going to say, oh, you're really smart, or how many times you go up to a man and say, oh, you're very handsome, before you say that, oh, um, you're smart, you're intellectual, or before we sort of give them those kind of attributes. So I think that's something really important to take away from it. And in a world where things such as sexual abuse, rape culture, um, slut shaming, any these kind of things are still prevalent and ubiquitous wherever we go, we're not done in fighting and advocating towards equality of the, of the genders. Um, and I just think that she says some of the things that people are too afraid to say. And she makes it very clear that there are struggles that nine out of 10 times only women have to suffer. Um, and I think that it's our job as the next generation to make sure that we make that ideological change and that we advocate for a world where men and women don't have differences. Men and women don't have to experience different things when they're walking down the street, when they're on a night out. And it's just, it's so important that we, we spread that message. And I think that she does it very well in this. And if you're someone who wants to read more about that, I'd definitely pick up either of her books, Milk and Honey or The Sun, Her Flowers. I think that above everything I realized that and it's not just something that I've got from Ru Ruby Core but I think that it's very important to respect the women of the world the focus is that there are so many women who've gone through so much be that our mothers be that our sisters be that anyone that we're, we know people have struggled and been through so much and I think that we need to take a second to appreciate them so whether that's your mother your sister your best friend your cousin take a second to appreciate what they've done Take a second to understand their struggles, understand where they've come from, and make sure that you not only acknowledge it, but you act upon it. We don't, on an everyday basis, look at the, the struggles and the disadvantages that women have to face, 
And I think that it is our responsibility as the next generation to make sure that we understand those issues and we cater for them, and be that in our laws and legislations or in our everyday interactions. And that doesn't necessarily mean inequality, but that means that we have contextualized things. We have made sure that we are accounting for the things that me, uh, that I as a man may not necessarily have to go through. And honestly, above all, I feel like it's made me a lot more appreciative of my mother and the struggles that she may have gone through leaving her house to join to um join my dad's family or both of my parents leaving india and coming to this country the struggles that they may have that not may they definitely went through because i hear about them and i think that there are so many good role model female role models in this world and for me ruby core is definitely one of them i was lucky enough to meet two role models in one day i got to meet ruby core as well as amelia liana and i think that i could not have had a better evening. Again, if you have not read Ruby Core's books, I highly, highly, highly recommend. Um, I hope you guys are having a good day. I know this is a very different video to what I usually make. It's quite like reflective, and but I really, really wanted to make this. Um, Ruby Core, if you're watching, I'm a big fan. I absolutely love both of your books. I think that you are brilliant. Your messages are brilliant. And I think that you definitely epitomize for me the 21st century woman. Screw the 21st century woman. You, I, you, for me, epitomize the 21st century human who is just spreading the right messages and making sure that we as a world understand the things that have gone wrong in the past but are working towards making this world a better place for everyone, no matter their gender, sexuality, race, background, ethnicity, whatever. You know, we're all human and we all need to respect each other. And I think that your books definitely advocate that. So thank you. Um, and thank you Emiliana because it was absolutely lovely meeting you and thank you guys for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up down below I'd love to hear what you think if you've read any one of Rupi Kaur's books please let me know which of your poems in them is your favourite and maybe start a little discussion in the comments down below um, and yeah click that subscribe button if you'd like to see more videos from me my favourite 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 poem by Rupi Kaur is Broken English and that is my absolute favourite one it's the one I can relate to the most out of all of this and the entire time she just wouldn't recite it. Like she'd moved on from that section of the book. She moved on to Milk and Honey. And I was like, why is she not reciting that one? That's her best poem, in my opinion. And then that was it when she was like, I only have five minutes left and I have one poem left. And then that was it. She started reciting broken English and it tore me apart because that is just all the feels concentrated in one poem. It was just amazing. And I'm going to end by giving you the pleasure of listening to it. And so I wrote bro broken English. <coughs> I think about the way my father pulled the family out of the poverty without knowing what a battle was. And my mother raised four children without being able to construct a perfect sentence in English. A discombobulated couple that landed in the new world with hopes that left a bitter taste of rejection in their mouths. No family, no friends, just man and wife Two university degrees that meant nothing. One mother tongue that was broken down. One swollen belly with a baby inside. A father worrying about jobs and rent. Cause no matter what, this baby was coming. And they thought to themselves, for a split second, was it worth it? to put all of our money into the dream of a country that's swallowing us whole. And Papa looks at his woman's eyes and sees loneliness living where the iris was. Wants to give her a home in a country that looks at her with the word visitor wrapped around their tongue. On their wedding day, she left an entire village to be his wife. Now she left an entire country to be a warrior. And when the winter came, they had nothing but the heat of their own bodies to keep the cold set. And so, like two brackets, they faced one another to hold the dearest parts of them, their children, close. They turned a suitcase full of clothes into a life and regular paychecks to make sure the children of immigrants wouldn't hate them for being the children of immigrants. They work too hard. You can tell
tell by their hands or eyes were begging for sleep, but our mouths were begging to be fed, and that is the most artistic thing I have ever seen. It is poetry to these ears that have never heard what passion sounds like, and my mouth is full of likes and ums when I look at their masterpiece, because there are no words in the English language that can articulate that kind of beauty. I can't compact their existence into 26 letters and call it a description. I tried once, but the adjectives needed to describe them don't even exist. So instead, I ended up with pages and pages full of words followed with commas and more words and more commas, only to realize that there are some things in the world so infinite, they could never use a full stop. So how dare you mock your mother when she opens her mouth in broken English spells out? Don't be ashamed of the fact that she split through countries to be here, so you wouldn't have to cross the shoreline. Thank you.